comparison of peas, let's just take a look at the different methods in which I tried my sweet peas. Now this is a Zinfidel pea. This seed came from Renee's garden. I planted this on March 7th in these plastic cups with holes drained in the bottom in the usual soil mix that I always prefer. Now, you can see how nice and thick and healthy these are. And they were pinched back when they got about four inches tall. And there are probably about five plants in here. You can see that they're really nice and healthy and ready to go into a big pot. On the other hand, this is the same pea from the same company, Zinfidel. This was planted in the house, in the garden room, and left. It was pretty cold in there too, so. I don't think it had to do with the cold. I think it had to do with the air, the lightness of the room. They were planted by a window. So they had plenty of light, but not as cold a temperatures as on the porch. And they also were planted in plastic with holes drilled on the bottom. Not quite so deep, but I, you can see that, and they were planted in the same soil, but you can see that they just don't have the bulk and the strength and, and the stoutness of the other peas. So. I would say that planting them outside in a protected area when it's nice and cold out gives you a much healthier sweet pea. Just look at that. And the same was the case with all of the peas which I tried in the house and out on the porch. So these lovely peas are ready to go into the so garden. Once again, these were planted outside in a protected area though. It was still plenty cold on the porch but they got a lot of light. A lot of cold, they got a lot of water, watered them every day. Planted once again on March 7th, and the date of that I'm filming this right now is May 17th. Huge difference. These are the peas planted from the soil blocks, and they went straight into this bed after about three weeks in the soil blocks. They're traveling pretty good and uh, about to open I hope so the soil blocks were pretty good too I just don't like dealing with soil blocks but they don't take as much potting mixture look at all that beautiful root right there and the roots don't wind round and round and round like they would in a pot and get it is true down. that the more you cut the blooms off the plant the more it'll bloom for you because um, I will cut these off, these stems, put them in a vase, they'll last four or five days beautifully in a vase, and within two days this plant will be covered in the little flowers once again. It's just really amazing. Jewels of Albion. This one is more heat resistant, and it has about three or four different colors of peas. Beautiful. Get up and look at them, you'll see some really pretty variations in the patterns on the peas. Many of them do have little patterns, such as these beautiful burgundy ones coming in that are starting to open. Lots of little patterns and, and um, stripes on them. Wow, what a perfect compliment for the peas is this beautiful poppy growing right next to them. And the burgundy poppies right behind it. Now, one of the best ways you can plant your peas seriously is directly into the ground. The peas that are growing so vigorously right here up this weather vane were planted, the seeds were just put right in the ground at the base of this weather vane way back in January. I just popped a little peas in, pushed them right into the ground and I, I just forgot all about them and they are totally vigorous. They're plant, they're growing like crazy up this fine structure here, this fine old rusty structure, and nearly made it to the top. So planting directly in the ground either late fall or early winter is a perfect way to plant your peas. There's another grouping of peas in the potager. They're climbing up a rusty headboard, bedboard, which the clematis was climbing up. Now the clematis has since bloomed and is going into this beautiful swirling golden heads of seed. Look at those. Those are marvelous. I think those seed heads are better than the plant itself.
but the peas are loving climbing up this vine and they haven't begun to open yet. I do have a lot of blooms on this one variety, but this variety also is growing in a area that where they're protected from the hot afternoon sun. They're shaded down here by other plants down there at the base where they need a lot of moisture. They like rich soil, a lot of moisture. And once a week, I've been fertilizing all the pea plants with a fish emulsion fertilizer. Now there's a sunflower you can see there in the background, which I didn't, I don't know how that sunflower got here, but I wish that it was closer to the peas because the peas would be beautiful climbing up that sunflower. Now I am going to be planting um, the sunflowers that I have up, going up on the slope garden up on the hill. I am definitely planting snow peas to grow up those sunflowers. It has taken actually months to record all the clips for this video and that's because it's been quite an endurance, endurance effort to get my peas going the way I wanted them to. But I think I finally achieved it after many trial and error episodes. And as you can see right here with this one right now, I've already cut a lot of the peas off of it today, but nevertheless, they're never covered in peas. I mean, they're never like a rose bush, which is just flourishing with roses. No, peas are sort of more, uh, you might get 20 little blooms one day and you cut those off and the next day you get 20 more. And as you can see, I've actually got some seeds going here, which I don't think I want to do that. It seemed to be a problem with sweet peas, and I can see that I have an abundance of aphids on this one right here. Looks like I need some ladybugs to come and visit, but they seem to be eating the stems and not the blossoms. But I'm going to have to get in here with some neem and get these sprayed. What I love about them is their sweet delicacy and their little subtle differences in colors. The purples and the lavenders change just slightly in shade and you have the deep purples and then you have the burgundies and you have the lilac colors and the, the uh, sort of a pale purple. They're just very pretty and I love also all the little twining stems and curly cues. Everything about peas. Eve, oh shoot, don't want to make some seeds out of that. What I love about these is their strength and yet their absolute delicacy. Kind of like a ballerina, they remind me of. Strong, graceful, and yet delicate. And feminine. So in closing, I hope that after my many attempts at growing sweet peas, I've shown you that it can be done even in a warm, humid climate such as ours. And so, if you plan to plant these just for the beauty and the delicacy of the vines growing in your cottage garden because they are so, so lovely, or you want the wonderful scent, which I forgot to mention, the scent of the sweet peas is remarkably wonderful. It's very, very, well, they're called sweet peas. They're sweet. They have a sweet and fragrant and very strong scent. Beautiful all by themselves in a simple jar, just a little vase, a handful of peas, or as a posy, or they look great with any kind of flower that you can think of. Here are some larkspur we're bringing in, which are also a wonderful country flower, or mix it up with some really vibrant cone flowers, such as this beautiful pink Sunday sunflower. There, perfect touch doesn't need anything else. I thought about using these alliums, but the scent is way too strong. It'll take away from that sweet pea scent. And then I thought, I have some beautiful little cilantro that's gone to seed with tiny, delicate flowers, but that also has a strong scent. And we don't want to take away the beautiful fragrance of the peas. So I think this very simple bouquet, just a beautiful country bouquet, is such a joy to have in your house.
and such a joy to me that you grew those sweet peas. So I am encouraging all of you who have had no success with them at all, just be persistent like I have been, and I hope next year you'll be putting together some small bouquets like this for your home. This is Jerry from Hopalong Hollow. Thanks for coming along.